AMA motocross season. It's good weather. We might get a little rain later on here at the track as we take a look at the 125s getting ready for their first moto. Talon Bolin, third in the points, but he's also very anxious to take on Alessio Chioti, the Italian who's come over to run. This could be termed a shootout of champions as Ricky Carmichael has already wrapped up his third consecutive AMA 125 title, while Alessio Chioti, seen here, has already won three consecutive world championships. He is working with a much different bike, though, than he raced in Europe, so it'll be interesting to see what he can do with it. Points race, Ricky Carmichael leads by 118 points, already sewed up the title, but Talon Bolin would certainly like to take advantage of Brock Sellers and move past his teammate into second. Let's go down to Davey Combs. Well, this is it, the end of a long outdoor national championship season for the 125 riders. Ricky Carmichael, of course, has already wrapped up his third national title, but today he goes after the tie with Mark Barnett's all-time win record of 25. But there's a wild card here. Check it out. Three-time world motocross champion, Alessio Chioti from Italy. This is a showdown the Steel City fans are very lucky to have. I don't know who you guys are going to pick, but I got to think Carmichael's the favorite. Neither rider's ever won here. Of course, Chioti's never been here before. And let's take a look at the track map where Coyote's going to be racing. Beautiful layout, Art. It's just designed perfect for spectators, even for the mechanics. I can see their rider all the way around, but the section we're highlighting for you, we're going to go on board and see what it looks like when you miss your timing. A lot of jumps out here on this racetrack, and if you don't double them, it ruins your rhythm all the way down the straightaway. This could have been a double if you'd landed right there. See another rider, how much more momentum he gains by clearing that double right out of the corner. Taking a look at the Suzuki starting grid, Ricky Carmichael, the champion, Bolin, finishing the year in third place. He would love to beat Coyote. Way a winner on the season. Casey Lytle, Brock Sellers also got a victory this year. Nathan Ramsey in the top five out of that pro circuit camp. And here's the rest of the 40-rider field. Well, it has been mentioned that this is the only stop of the National Motocross Circuit that RC has not won at. That's quite a challenge. But he also, with a win here today, could tie Mark Barnett's all-time 125 career win record of 25 victories. So although his title has already been secured, he's got a lot of motivation here as we get set for the 125 to crank it up. Brock Sellers, Chad Watts, Ricky Carmichael's mechanic, Carmichael, a look of quiet confidence, David. Focus, I think. He knows he's got to beat number 109, the world champion. That'll feel good. They had all kinds of problems with the bike, unfortunately, during practice, and Coyote had to go all the way to the last chance qualifier to get into the main event. We're set to go. The car is sideways. The 125, first photo at Delmont. Steel City Raceway is underway. Carmichael. Got the decent start on the inside, but it's Pingree who gets the whole shot. Number 60 on the Primal Suzuki. Yamaha's right behind him. You see Carmichael wheelied off the gate, lost a little bit of momentum, got closed off, but he played those first couple of corners smart. That's the key here at Steel City. That, that left and right, a lot of problems can happen, and he's in good shape right now. Casey Johnson in second. It's Ernesto Fonseca, his Yamaha Troy teammate. In third, with Ricky Carmichael in fourth, there's Talon Bolin in fifth. Brock Sellers in sixth, and Coyote is caught back in the pack. It's gonna be tough for Coyote to work his way up. It's tougher to ride against the American riders anytime I ever went to Europe. Just knowing how those guys are gonna race against him takes a little while to get used to, and this is gonna be his first opportunity. David Pingree, David Bailey, has really uh, shown nicely here in the latter moments of the motocross season. Well, he's starting to get more comfortable now. That happened to me before I started winning championships towards the end of the season. He started to get a little bit of a flow. He's obviously got that. He's also been getting great starts. That's right. This was his third consecutive hole shot. Casey Johnson, number 16, right behind Pingree now. You see him fighting with a section where they watered the track a little bit. This big, long left-hand sweeper into this tight left. You can see he's really fighting. Track is in excellent condition. The next lap through that corner will be perfect. 39 guys behind him will come through there and turn that up, and the burn will be established. Pingree, Johnson, Carmichael now moving into third as he passed Ernesto Fonseca. Carmichael's right where he wants to be. Almost. <laughs> At least he's moving up, but you can see how dirty he's getting. He's going to lose vision if he stays back there much longer. He'll run out of those tearaways. Carmichael, Fonseca, Bowen. 
As the 125s have opened up the program here at Delmont, the final round of the year. David Pingree, will he be leading? We'll find out when we get back. You should hear about our opening motive for 125s. David Pingree is our leader. Casey Johnson in second place is starting to apply a little pressure right now. So is Carmichael in third. Real opportunity for these guys to get out there and just try to catch Carmichael a little bit off guard, even though I, I still know he's motivated today. As soon as you have that title, you start to ride a little bit differently, usually. These guys are taking it to him right now. Does it surprise you that Carmichael's never won here? Carmichael trying for the inside as Casey Johnson takes the lead. Bar to bar we go with Pingree. Pingree wants it back. Casey Johnson to the inside. He's got it, David. Side by side by side down that hill. It doesn't get any better than that. Casey Johnson's made his move. Ricky looks like he's about to make one as well. On the inside, he's got the clear shot on the jump to get by Pingree and put some heat now on Casey Johnson. So all kinds of position changes here in the early going of our opening moto. Casey Johnson, the leader for the first time in the race, with Ricky Carmichael and Pingree in that order, and Ernesto Fonseca trailing in four. You can really see from this shot how high speed it is out here at Delmont. The balance it takes to get into those ruts exactly on your line is critical. Carmichael here just realizing that because they wanted the track, everyone was fading wide. He kind of guessed and took the inside line and it worked perfect. Now the next target for RC is Casey Johnson. Johnson twice has recorded second place motos this year, but he's been hampered with a bad back injury that took him out of some races mid-season. Trying to get back up to par here. Looks back. Ricky Carmichael says, I'm coming through. And Ricky has an easy time of it, really. That's just unbelievable. I mean, he's Johnson went through there about as fast as he feels like he can go. Ricky just had something extra. I mean, look at him go. He's just wide open using every inch of the racetrack. Ricky Carmichael looking good on the 125. He's not going to go to the Bud's Creek 250 GP round. He's going to practice for the boat across the nations. Let's go down to Davy Combs. Chad, a pretty inspired start for Ricky here in the first motor. You got the championship already, but Coyote being here, does that add something for Ricky? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, it is nice to have the world champ here. He's a great rider, so it's a little more incentive to do great. And also, if we could win this, we've never won at Steel City. It's the only track we've never won at. And it'd be nice to tie old Barnett. Do you think this is the kind of track he likes, the soil conditions tacky like this? Yeah, this track's in excellent shape right now. There's traction and there's different lines. One of the finest mechanics in the business, I think. Uh, he's done a wonderful job with Ricky Carmichael, David. I think they relate well to each other, and he's done a, a pretty good job of mo keeping him motivated always. Even if it seems like there isn't any motivation, they seem to be able to find some somewhere to keep him on track, because the way he does best is when he's most, most aggressive. The Frenchman for Yamaha of Troy, Stefan Roncata, number 22, is now hounding Bolin, number 711. Roncata's come on very strong in the uh, latter portions of the races. He's been hampered by injuries all year. Bolin in back of Ernesto Fonseca, number 100. So he's in a Yamaha of Troy sandwich right now. This timing through here is critical. You can see it before they start this section. They're jumping over one of the main line double jumps. Not everyone is able to do that. Used to be able to only do it on a 250. Now the 125s have so much horsepower and torque out of the corner. And these guys have gotten so skilled at getting that clutch feather just right. They get out over and make better timing. In the last three races, Ron Cotta has really looked well. In fact, let's go back four races. Second place at Troy, fourth at Washougal, second at Millville, and a third overall in the last race at Binghamton. Bowling. Pushing it to the limit up through the switchbacks up and down the hill, getting a little out of shape, but still not losing much time. A little bit out of his rhythm. There he is again. You see him just stick the front wheel in the wrong spot. He's been doing that all through these corners. Hopefully that'll start to smooth out during the race. That's going to make it a little oh. easier. Casey Johnson has gone down, so David Pingree now will move into second place. Pingree looking to re-sign with Bramble Suzuki. Hasn't done it yet, though, but he's... He has more performances like this. They'll certainly want him back. It is Pingree in second, Fonseca in third, Bolden in fourth, and Roncata in fifth. Now it's really just become a race for second. I mean, these guys are basically chasing Pingree like he's the leader right now because Carmichael's just checked out. Look at those little tiny berms at the bottom of these off-camber corners. you got to come down the hill with so much speed and balance and find that line that's four inches wide and try to get in it. 
If you can get your bike locked in and get back on the power, it's a huge time saver, but that takes incredible focus for 30 minutes. Roncata passing Bowler. So Stefan Roncata, number 22. His next target is his own teammate, Fonseca. Jason McCormick, number 36, at the uh, caboose of that freight train. Coming off a seventh overall, a 7-5 at the Millville race. Roncata starting to pick it up as well towards the end of the season. He and Pingree both been, I don't know, eating the same food or something because these guys have really got it going. Both anxious to prove themselves coming off injuries, David. We'll be right back with more 125 action from Delmont in a moment. It's the final AMA motocross round of the year. Ricky Carmichael has simply checked out here in the first moto. He's looking for his ninth win of the season. And is back in that dominating style after having a little stretch of poor starts and uh, going down, hitting the dirt a few times. I'm glad to see him work through it. That just shows that he is going to master whatever you put in front of him. Whatever challenge is there, it may take him a few weeks, but it seems like he's able to overcome everything. Sellers moving up to six. Look at Alessio Chioti. After a bad start, is already up to seventh place. That's the only mistake I've seen Carmichael make all day. His front wheel went over that berm a little bit just because somebody destroyed it and still didn't lose much time. Just a clear track. Looks like he's just out there in practice all by himself. <laughs> really a lonely ride. Whereas Alessio Chioti has number 27, Brock Sellers, in front of him as a target. Usually you watch the Europeans and there's a whole Euro thing. It's just the, the style is different. When you watch Alessio, it looks like an American rider. It looks like Pingree or somebody. Yeah, it looks like he studied him. tapes of the American riders, doesn't it? Yeah. Coyote, of course, uh, one of the headliners of a very fine Italian team going to the motocross to nations in Brazil. They'll be one of the favorites so when they get there. Alessio had to really work through a lot of problems to win his third consecutive title in that GP circuit. Uh, uh, three championships were very difficult. Um, this year he had uh, a clutch problem in the middle of the season that cost him 20 points, and it was a difficult uh, comeback from that. Alessio really enjoyed his experience in the Supercross Wars earlier this year and would like to return to the United States to ride full time. Si, the boy. Uh, he would love to come over into America and try to capture an AMA Supercross title or a national outdoor title. Uh, it's going to be tough, but he'd love to do it. He'd like to do it next year. You know, David Bailey with no doubles in GP racing. Uh, I think the guy's got incredible timing. Uh, Certainly helped him to come over here and ride the Supercross season and early on, and I think probably got out and was able to ride with a few other guys on some of the test tracks. He didn't go in there completely blind. That's helping him now. Passed by Faraci. Wants to put a motocross, Supercross team together for next year, and they want him to headline it and then pick up one younger American rider. There's the Faraci plan. It's exciting to see Husky Varna back in the sport. I mean, when I was growing up, Husky was it. They were like Team Honda. Alessio Chioti. Oh! Chioti takes a tough ball, but just bounces right back up. Shakes his head, goes back to the fight. That goes back to that balance I was saying, Art. you got to find that four-inch wide line. His front wheel drifted just over it, started to wash out in high side. So a tough break for the three-time 125 World GP champion. Watch his front wheel right here. Just out over the berm a little bit, starts to wash out. And it's one of those that just completely catches you by surprise. His chin hit the crossbar. Gave him a little nut and shakes it off. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't expect that to happen. But that's just how quick this track can bite. He was a tough kid as well as an outstanding racer. Ernesto Fonseca is feeling the heat from uh, Ron Cotta right now, his teammate. Roncata comes to the inside. He's looking for the pass. Fonseca cuts him off. Roncata now touches the back tire. He's letting him know he's there. Knock it on the door. There's a big difference between having somebody behind you about that distance versus running into your back tire in a corner. Johnson used to do that to me. Just like made me feel like, gosh, I'm going about as fast as I can. <laughs> I don't know what else I can do. Obviously, this guy needs to get around. It starts making me nervous. Start thinking about them. You start trying to take their lines. And bowling could benefit right here from both these guys. 
Both these riders have re-signed for next year. The Yamaha of Troy, Ron Cotton to the inside, now gets by his teammate. Nice pass. I was just thinking that if these guys start focusing too much on each other, Bowling could take advantage, and I think that could be part of the reason that Ron Cotta's decided to pick it up a little bit. Bowling behind them. Talon signing a two-year deal with Pro Circuit for next year. That's going to be a strong team. Nick Way starting to find his rhythm. The number one played on Ramsey and Shea Bentley, who we haven't got to see very much, but I know he's quick. I think it's interesting to have a veteran like Talon Bolin with all the youngsters uh, that uh, Pro Circuit has signed. Carmichael is way out in front. Pingree in second, Ron Cotta now in third. We'll be right back. Steel City Raceway. Moto number one of the 125s. Ricky Carmichael is our leader, but all the action is right here. Brock Sellers on the tail end of this four-bike train with Talon Bolin in front of him. Here's Ricky. And it's the white flag lap, the final lap. Carmichael looking for his 17th moto victory of the year. Incredible domination. I had 16 one year, and it felt like all I did was win. I mean, he's got 17, and he's still got another moto to go. I just can't imagine what it must be like to be inside his head. And he was pretty disturbed when he got a third at Millville and a second at Wash Hugo. Yeah, you can see that. Even if he crashes in the first turn, gets up, and it's almost a photo finish and he loses by an inch, he's still blowing a gasket between motos if he wants to win them all. That's why he's been so dominant. The guy's focused all week. He wants to win on Tuesday, Wednesday, on Sunday, all week. And he doesn't want to leave the 125 ranks without winning at every track. His very first pro race was right here at Delmont. Went down once, maybe twice, but... Uh, Showed up good enough to win Rookie of the Year that year with that one race under his belt. Same way Rayner joined the pro ranks. Picked up to think he won his first race here. So Carmichael's going to have to wait quite a while to try to pick up a win here if he can. Back to Robbie Rayner running the 250s now. He won three of his five 125 national wins right here at this track. Talk about domination. Be talking about the king of Delmont. Robbie Raynard's 125 action has to register along with Jeff Ward's 500 CC action. This may be a better track for Raynard than Milvin. It is certainly in terms of his results. He rides well at both. It's weird how some tracks you just do well, others you just don't. This, this might be the track that, that Carmichael just can't seem to get it together. Although he can keep doing what he's doing so far today. Looks like he'll be able to make it a perfect career I guess in the 125 by winning every venue. Put a capper on that Jeff Ward won four of the five 500 races that were staged here. Ricky Carmichael. The crowd cheering for him. We've got a great crowd on hand even though rain is threatening. It doesn't scare these people away. They're used to this big black thunderclouds rolling in. All they do is just hang on to their beer a little tighter. <laughs> Carmichael on cruise control right now. Ricky going up the hill, glances at the checkered flag, puts a finger in the air, and easily takes another moto. Pingree holds on to second, Ernesto Fonseca in fourth, and Carl Nunn, another GP rider, getting into the top ten. Let's go down to Davey now, who's with our winner. Champ, I never would have guessed you clinched the tile last week. You rode about as hard as you could ride. I'll tell you what, Davey, that was a fun moto. The weather's out here is awesome. You guys did a great job on the track. I'll tell you what, uh, this is the best racetrack so far this year prepared. Uh, the dirt is perfect, and, uh, you know, the overcast is keeping the, the track just great. Uh, that, was, that was definitely a fun moto. Were you keeping an eye out for Alessio Coyote at all? Uh, not really, you know. I had my hands full with uh, Johnson and uh, Pingree. So uh, it, it was tough. I didn't get the start I wanted. I don't know what happened. Uh, it wasn't too bad, you know, I had the inside gate, so uh, I didn't get squeezed out, but uh, it was good. One more moto, and you could do two things. You could win at Steel City for the first time, which would give you all the 125 national tracks in your career, and it'd give you that 25th career win. Yeah, that, both of the combination would be great. Uh, I never won here. That, that, that'd be the main thing for me, definitely. After getting his third consecutive hole shot on the year, David Pinkery, number 60, registers his best finish as far as the moto is concerned as he places second. 
Let's return now to Davey Combs down in the winner's area. Albertine on the left. Wyndham right next to him. Little elbow in there on the inside. A good position as John Dowd gets the uh, credit for the hole shot number six. Dowdy out in front. Larry Ward moves into second place. Caton on the Suzuki in third. That's a big surprise getting by Ezra Lusk in the corner. And Albertine right there by Lusk. He's got his teammate Larry Ward to help him out here in case it should come to that. But right now, I don't think he needs any help. He's ahead of Wyndham. John Dowd, his last race with Team Yamaha before becoming a teammate of Larry Ward's right behind him. Ward, his last race on Team Suzuki. They're both going to Kawasaki to join RC. Ricky Carmichael in the 250 ranks next year. A little surprised Lusk come out in better shape. He went into the first corner. It looked like he kind of had the hole shot. Dowd had the inside on him, but it seemed like he could have held down second. Whoa! Dowdy not uh, preferring to push Ward off the track. He could have very easily there. And Larry Ward moves into the lead. That was beautiful. You usually see all the passes through that corner being made on the inside. Ward just laid it over, used the outside bank, doubled through there, and Picked up the lead. That's got to feel good right now. Anytime you can lead the first lap of a national, the crowd's going wild. You get to pull a tear off, have clear vision. You're the guy in control. Track conditions are great. It's getting overcast. The wind picking up a bit. Maybe the rain's on the way. Larry Ward is our leader with John Dowd right there in second place. Caton, number 63, is having problems holding on to third. He's got the best riders in the world breathing down his neck. That's not going to be easy, but it is exciting as a privateer to get out front and see the leaders, kind of get used to that pace, all the noise the crowd makes up there, because when you're back in 20th, the crowd isn't making any noise at all. Lee McCullum, Larry Ward's mechanic, big deep breath right there. He's going to be uh, Pastrana's mechanic next year. That'll be exciting. Yeah. You know, the riders actually look forward to something new once in a while. You know, you, you don't want to feel like you burn any bridges, but it is nice to put on new colors, new clothing, new helmet, new motorcycle to get used to. And for the mechanics as well. I mean, for him to get an opportunity to work with a new kid who I have a feeling from what I've seen and heard, Mastrano is going to, he has the opportunity to be a Jeremy McGrath. The kid's got talent. And, uh, he hasn't even had a chance to race yet. People are already assuming he's going to win a lot. Wyndham back in sixth. As Greg Albertine, there you see Wyndham number 14. And Greg Albertine, he wants to stay ahead of Wyndham. The battle for third is on. Caton slips back as Albertine slips through. Got to be a good feeling for Albertine right now, knowing he got a decent start. Kind of overshoots those berms right there. It looks like he might have done that on purpose to give himself a better line in the next corner. But he just put another rider between himself and Kevin, so things are looking good so far. Larry Ward, still our leader. Will Billy Davy Coombs coming to you from Delmont, Pennsylvania. The final event of the year. Larry Ward is our leader. His teammate, Greg Albertine, trying to nail down the 250 championship is in third behind John Dowd. Ward's best 99 motocross was a fifth overall, a 6-5 at Troy. But the battle for fourth is on. Mike Caton and Kevin Windham. Windham second in points, trying to catch up to Albertine. He just came down that hill hot on the inside. Couldn't quite get under Caton. That would have been nice for Kevin if he could have made the pass. He almost pulled off a double pass. He got Henry. He needs to get by Caton as fast as he can and try to get up there and start to bother Albertine a little bit and change his whole attitude because so far Albertine's got clear sailing. Two four strokes. There's Jimmy Button making the pass on Doug Henry right behind Wyndham. It's such a fast pace right now. Everyone is pushing it to the end. Jeff Stanton right there cheering on Kevin Wyndham saying, get by this guy. Why did Caton have to pick this moto to ride with so well? I think it's probably going through Kevin's head. Caton looks to the side. Kevin Windham has the opportunity right now and makes the pass. So Kevin not letting Greg Albertine get away from him, but he's got to get closer as we take a look at the Honda scoreboard. Ward down still one and two. Here comes Jimmy Button. Boy, that four-stroke, you, you can hear it coming. But Caden's not budging. He's staying right in front of him, racing with everybody right now as we go back to the battle for second place. Greg Albertine now getting within striking distance of John Dowd. Alvey 
the last year of his contract is not mentioning anything about renegotiating with Suzuki until after this championship is secured. Let's go to Davy Coons. Joe, big day for you guys. How's it going so far? Yeah, it looks pretty good right now. Kevin's behind us, so that's a good thing. What about Larry Ward up front? Does that surprise you? Yeah, Larry's riding really good, so I'd rather have it be one of our bikes than somebody else. Finally, what was Greg like this morning? Was he nervous at all? I, I know the answer to that. He's never nervous. Uh, he was actually better this week than last week, so I think he's all right. Albertine hounding John Dowd. He's approaching this final round with that same sense of confidence and positiveness that he did at the beginning of the year when he said, hey, I'm going to win this thing this year. Albertine, bar to bar with John Dowd coming down the hill. Who breaks last? Albertine takes the corner. And Albie will move into second place. That's a close, that's impressive for Albie to just come down there and lean into the corner, just trusting that Dowd wasn't going to park him. They came in there hot together. Looked like Albie already had the pass. John made a good effort to try to get back in there and make him earn it. And you're right, our Albie has just remained so confident. You just look on, you can't tell by the look on his face what's going on inside his head. This looks like he's always got it under control, a little confident smile. Here's Kevin Wyndham, though, right on the tail of John Dowd. Wyndham. Wow, jumps all the way out to the flat. He's not worried about trying to time the backside of that plateau, plateau just whatever's fastest. Comes a little, a little bit short on that one. Dowdy hanging in there pretty well. I don't think Kevin cares about how pretty he's riding right now. It's just a matter of staying with Albertine's pace, trying to move around Dowd and then out, get into the lead if he can and try to make this title go down to the final moto, not have it decided here. He's had an outstanding year. He's the winningest rider with four victories and has more hole shots than anyone else this year. He has six moto wins, and right now he's working hard to move into third place. Hey, well, you get the idea right there that Brian Berry's trying to get Dow to run the pace of these guys, but you gotta understand the motivation of Albertine and, and even more motivation, I would think, from Kevin right now. Their pace is probably just a little bit above what it usually is. And Dowd's doing about all he can, but if there's anywhere he's slow a little bit, it's in the corners, and Barry's trying to let him know. Dowd, uh, his best performance is second at Southwick, but he's had all kinds of injury problems, and that all started during the Supercross season when he uh, had that shoulder injury coming out of Daytona. Put him way behind on the motocross season, and then also uh, it just uh, hasn't healed that quickly. He's been bothered with it throughout almost the entire motocross season. Jimmy Button now with the four stroke and that power and the grip dealing with the two stroke of John Dowd. Yeah, going back to the 125 moto, we just watched Pingree having to come back from injuries and building that confidence. Dowd's in the same position. Button got his very first moto win and very first overall win at Washougal. And after that, he's had second place finishes in the last two races. Let's go down to Davey Coombs, who's with his mechanic. Brian, Jimmy didn't get the usual good start. You guys begin laying the air, but he's moving up well. Well, he got a little bit of wheel spin off the start. Uh, there's a little bit of a pileup in the first turn. We started around 10th. Uh, he's coming up through the pack. He's in fourth right now. Uh, we'll just have to see how it pans out. Our leader still, Larry Ward, with Greg Albertine, the teammates, 1-2 out in front. Here's Doug Henry and Ezra Lusk. Lusk with all kinds of bad luck and problems here in the late going of the season, and Doug Henry goes down. What a break for Ezra this time. He just slipped out. Another one of those berms I talked about, you just have to find exactly the right line. Stay right in it perfect, trying to get that clutch back straight. Some guys run it a little bit loose, so it, they can bend it back easier, but I don't know, I kind of like to run mine tight, not fall. Ward Albertine win up our top three. We'll be right back with more 250 action in a moment. Field City Raceway, photo number one of the 250s, as for us, number four. Several people thought he might win the championship this year. He was number one in the points at Southwick after a win and two podium appearances. A lot of bad luck has struck Ezra Lusk since then. Tim Ferry, number 20, on the Mazda Chaparral Yamaha, is behind Lusk. He's not just behind him. He's actually bothering him a little bit. Might have just ignited Ezra to get around John Dowd. 
Dowdy trying to get back at him. Does so. Back and forth we go. John Dowd and Ezra Lusk with Tim Ferry on their tails. I still like it. I think I think Lusk needed to come down there and make that pass and just keep his fingers crossed that he can make it stick. And even if you can't, he's definitely got Dowd thinking the next time down that hill. Ezra signing a new deal with Team Honda earlier in the season. Steve Mathis, Tim Ferry's mechanic looking on. Ferry coming out of the privateer ranks. Signed by the independent team, the Chaparral team. Larry Ward, our leader, with Albertine still in second place. The two Team Suzuki riders out in front as the battle goes on between Lusk, Dowd, and Ferry's looking to take advantage. I've always liked Ferry's riding style. Ever since his first win, I think at the round 95 at the Open Orlando on the 125, I've just noticed that his riding style. It just sticks out. It, it reminds me of the way I like to ride. When I watch him, whatever I'm thinking he ought to be doing, it's what he does. It's just, he's a pleasure to watch. He gets by Lusk. That. Yeah, Ferry getting by Lusk now. So it's Dowd, Ferry, and Lusk with Robbie Raynard. Very quick on this track. This is his favorite track anywhere. And look for Robbie Raynard to make a move on Ezra. Race the track, Tim Ferry. That's the best advice he can give. Mike Gosler putting the lap times, 2.37. These are longer laps than most uh, tracks on this series. Steve Lampson with troubles. He's had a tough year all year long. Looking maybe toward Arena Cross or maybe the Japanese National Circuit for next year. Well, that looks like it's a problem with Steve, not the motorcycle. It sure does, David. He's trying to shake it off right now. Recover to maybe get back onto the track. Medical personnel right there on hand. Here's our leader. And Albertine in second place. Larry Ward and Greg Albertine. And you suppose Larry Ward will be appreciative of the fact that Team Suzuki gave him a second chance at a factory ride, which is very unusual. I think we're about to find out. <laughs> I think I know where you're going with that. Yeah. Yeah, we, I'm sure he is. And he understands what's going on right now. He's had as much as the uh, eight second lead. He looks back at Albertine as if to say, take it over, partner. Well, that's smart because the five points that Albie needed over Wyndham, Ward just gave him. Three points from first to second, two more from third, to, from second to third rather. So that'll be the five points and the title if things stay the way they are. Watch Ward looks over, takes the outside line, go for it. Doesn't necessarily do it in some sneaky section in the back to make it look cool. No, he's going to do it right in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Relax and breathe. The instructions for Greg Albertine on his way to his very first AMA title. Let's go down to Davey. Joe, a little bit of quick math. Right now, the way it stands, you guys win the national championship. I'll be first, Ward second, Wyndham third. Yeah, we got three more laps left. Uh, Kevin ain't going to quit, so I can't say nothing until Jacker Flag drops. <laughs> How do you feel right now? I feel better than I did earlier today, that's for sure. Uh, Greg's comfortable, so I feel good. Actually, David, Larry Ward has an important assignment right now. He's got to stay up there in second place. Yeah, I'm sure Albertine really appreciates the help that he's gotten from Larry so far this season. And, and he does uh, just what happened that past lap. But if Wyndham's able to get around him, I think he's going to go over there and have a word with him. <laughs> That'll mess things up. Uh, he's got a pretty good cu cushion right now. That was a lap rider coming over the jump next. They got quite a bit of room. This is the seventh straight year that Delmont has been the last race of the season, but it's the first time in at least three years that the title has been decided here. If that is indeed is the case, let's go down to uh, Davey Combs. Hi, right, Roger. About three laps away. How do you feel? Feel pretty good, as good as good as you can feel in this situation. You know, it's, it, it's you know it's a motorsport, so you never know until it's finished. But um, things could not look better now. Did you have words with Robbie Raynard and Larry Ward before the motor? Or just think about Greg if he was out there. Yeah, I asked him, you know, not not to be in the way, and uh, you know, I don't I don't expect anybody to to ride dirty, and uh, that's both from outside and from the other side. And uh, up to now, things are going good, so I hope. It, not a seven minutes like this. That's a tough time to have to interview Roger DeCoster, David. <laughs> now, he doesn't want to take his eyes off of anything. And yeah. He's got things coming in his headset as well, but he's been in this position before. And, uh, you know, he's still get nervous no matter what. 
mean, it's always nerve-wracking when there's a title on the line. He's been trying so hard for a number of years at Suzuki to get a title back. He's finally done it. That win of Bill Bill giving Greg a 35-point lead with two races to go was a big one. Our Suzuki in trivia question. When was the last time that Suzuki won a 250 national championship? The answer when we return. Even Jean-Michel Bale, the only other former GP champion to win an AMA 250 title, did what Greg is about ready to do. And Greg Albertine could win the title and also win a race in the same season. Jean-Michel Bale won the title in 91 but did not win a race. Greg Albertine has won two so far this year. On the final lap, our Suzuki trivia question, when was the last time Suzuki won a 250 national championship? It was 1981. And Ken Howerton. So, indeed, quite an honor for this young man who's tried so hard in his five some seasons in the United States to regain a championship play. Greg's wife, do you think she's kind of just a little bit excited? Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure she's excited, nervous. Probably thinking about think of all that shopping I could do. You know, oh, now, nah, come on. That's what my wife would be thinking. <laughs> now, it's nerve-wracking for him. You don't have any control over what's going on. Sometimes it's better off being the rider. They should have some control. Believe it or not, David, this is the fifth time of the 90s a rider who took second place one year will have won the title the very next year. Tell Kevin Windham that yet? Not yet. Okay, that'll make him feel better. But he's got a good shot at it the way he's ridden this year. Jimmy Button now starting to put some pressure on Windham. He has been bothering him this whole time. Kevin Carmichael and his dad behind him, they're all watching. Carmichael, good friends with Larry Ward. I think that'll be a good mixture over there at Kawasaki next year. Ricky already knows what it feels like to be in Greg's shoes. After so many years of not having a title, what do you think it means to the Suzuki personnel, not only in America, but also Japan? Everything. That's what they do. That's why they spend money. That's why they hire these guys. It all comes down to winning championships and selling motorcycles. Jeff Stanton giving him a thumbs up. And right now you got a, a big pat on the back for Roger DeCosta for turning this program around and getting more support for next year and year ensuing years from the factory in Japan. The checkers for Alvey. Ward's holding off Wyndham, barely. That's it, and you are. Oh, yeah! Woo! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Oh, 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 you're the man. Yeah! yeah. You're the man. Well, right now, Greg Albertine's the man, I think, as he has taken this first moto and the championship of the 250s in AMA national action. Ward in second, Wyndham in third. Let's go down to Davey. Well, Greg, finally it's happened. Before I even ask you any questions, I want to give the microphone to the AMA's Duke Finch. Yeah, Greg, hard fought, well-deserved. Took you a little long in your plan, Don, but on behalf of the AMA, congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, Greg, let me ask you a question. Did you know that the moto would turn out that way? Did you have any idea that Larry Ward would get out there and help you? You needed a win, but you needed Wyndham to get third, and it happened. Well, Larry's been the best teammate I could really ask for. You know, every every time I've needed a push, and uh, he's helped me out, and, uh, you know, I really got to give him all the thanks. But uh, first and foremost, I got to give Jesus Christ all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, you know, and uh, thank you for this, Lord. All of the Suzuki brass are here. Your old mechanic, Ian's here. Your new wife, Amy. This has to be a great feeling. It's an awesome feeling, you know. I've waited so long for this, and uh, just all, to all the fans who have stuck by me, you know, through the hard times, and uh, when they didn't think I was going to do it, they still supported me, and, and I really appreciate that. Congratulations, Sam. The pressures of high expectations mixed with frustrating failures over several years now lifted. As we go back down to Davey, and the man of the hour now is Larry Ward. Well, Larry, beside us, Greg Albertine's getting all the accolades of a national champion. I got to say, it looked to me like you took one for the team. Ah, well, you know, I was having fun out there. Uh, I don't know why everything was clicking so good for me out there. First motos, I've been struggling, but I got a decent start, and I was, I was felt like I was riding a comfortable pace and pulling away. I felt really good, but, uh, you know, there's always second moto, and that was a lot of fun, and Greg and 
Roger, the whole team has been so good to me the last two years. Um, you know, it, it, it's no big deal. <laughs> After a horrible season's opener, Kevin Windham fought back all season long to become a contender. Let's go right back down to Davey. Well, Kevin gave it all you had in that moto, but it looks like the Suzuki's just got away in the beginning. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I definitely wasn't wasn't riding uh, quite like I did in practice. You know, I was kind of a little nervous, and uh, I don't know. I mean, Greg, Greg, and those guys were riding great, and I just uh, tried to try to get in after. I, I rode good, but those guys were riding uh, riding really good up there, and uh, you know, Greg had his had his uh, visions uh, focused in on what he had to do, and he did a good job. My hats go off to uh, Albertine. 125s come from running for the second 125 photo from Delmont. Pingree looks like he got another hole shot. Number 60 has the lead. Carmichael in second place. Ron Cott and Pingree were right close together. Nathan Ramsey had trouble in that first turn. Looks like he's going straight to the mechanics area. He's shaking his head. May have bent something. Already Carmichael goes for the pass. It just doesn't waste any. It's so much like McGrath and Supercross. Once again, reaching up to clear his vision in a place that, I don't know, he reaches up to take a tearaway off in places I wouldn't let go of the handlebars. <laughs> he always pulls it off. Ron Cotta trying to hold with him now as Pingree feels the heat of Ricky Carmichael right behind him. Well, Pingree realizes right now, if he can stay here, this is an overall win. And Carmichael's motivated as well. If he can get by, He'll pick up the win, win here at Delmont and Ty Barnett. Both these guys are motivated. Carmichael to the inside. Look at that leap. Does the double. Gets by Pingree. Ricky Carmichael in first. Here comes Ron Cotta. The three of them starting to pull a little bit away from Casey Johnson. And Carmichael makes the pass in the place we just looked from our onboard camera. He's able to jump all those doubles from the inside. Guys that have been able to do that mostly been on 250s. Carmichael pulls it off on the 125 just with perfect timing. Plus, he sat down to get that extra lift on the suspension. You can see, well, now they're trying to work on Nathan Ramsey's machine, and that's Chad Watts, RC's mechanic, helping out there with the Pro Circuit machine. I was going to say, on some cameras, you can see raindrops. It is starting to rain here at Delmont. But it certainly hasn't affected the track any. Well, it's probably for Greg Albertine in the pits. He's probably glad he got this championship over with in the first moto and not have to deal with mud in the second moto to decide it. That would be nerve wracking. Absolutely. That's where bikes start to have problems. And you see the little bit of wheel spin coming out of there on the hard pack stuff. Anywhere it's polished off, it's going to get real slick, even with a few raindrops. So Carmichael is in the lead with Ron Cotta trying to hold close here with the second moto. Pingree in third. This should be a good battle. Ron Cotta would love to beat Carmichael in this moto. He doesn't care about records. He doesn't care about where Carmichael's won or lost. He'd just like to beat him here. He just needs a win before the season starts. It's his last ends. chance. Coming around to the mechanics area, I wonder if Chad had a chance to get over and give a signal to his rider. Seemed like he was pretty involved in helping Ramsey get going. Don't know that Carmichael really needs him. He looks all he looks around quite a bit. He's very aware of what's going on around him. Signal board he usually looks at just to keep Chad happy and in case Chad's putting lap times down on there he can race the track. David it's nice under these conditions too that he's out front and can take the line he wants and feels more secure on. Plus, is if it keeps raining, it's gonna, that roost will be a problem for the guys behind you in, in terms of vision. Every time you get a little piece of dirt that hits you in the goggles, it'll stick. Eventually, those add up, you can't see. Casey Johnson, Talon Bolin in a battle. Bolin on the FMF 711. Casey Johnson behind Pingree, trying to put the pressure on. He goes wide, Bolin. You can see the difference in lines in that corner approaching the sky jump we showed you. You can go anywhere on that racetrack you want. Still come out of there in pretty good shape. It really just depends on whether you're protecting the, the line from somebody that's challenging from behind. Iron Michael is looking to check out, but Ron Cotta won't let him. We'll be right back. Ron Cotta in second. This is the battle for third. Pingree, along with Casey Johnson and Talon Bolin. Casey giving him a look. 
Pingree trying to get back up there and get another great moto finish. Perhaps round out with his best overall. He's got a lot of pressure right now with Casey right there. Bolin pressing them both. You see Bolin reaching up just off to the side there to clear his vision a little bit. So that is starting to become a little bit of a problem, especially since he's following two bikes. Pingree with his best moto finish of the year in the opening moto, a second place after the whole shot. He's trying to hold on to third right now. Bolin is not waiting for Casey Johnson to make a move, really. Casey, though, slick move. Wow, it was great racing. Bolin came down and pushed Casey so hard. He ended up making the pass on Pingree. I don't know if he really meant to do that. <laughs> but that worked out pretty good. And there goes Bolin. All into the inside. Just Pingree shut the door on the corner. See what he does down here. This is the corner I talked about where he can run all the way inside, all the way outside. He beat him to the corner, so he gets to take whatever line he wanted. Bolin does a little dirt track action there. Sliding on the uh, slippery turf. And there's Jessamine right behind these guys in a pretty fine ride. Brandon Jessamine showing some potential. If you can just keep the pace of these three guys battling, you're doing something right out there. He's number actually been able to close slightly. I was going to say the number is 67 for Jessamine. Falling over the big double. Gets it down just on the downside. That gets tough to do lap after lap. Sometimes you get in there, you have you have to time that if you jump too far, you land out on the flat. The suspension goes through quite a bit, and you can't get into the corner as nice. These guys time it and land it exactly on the downside. That's when they can start their breaking for the corner. With the domination of Ricky Carmichael all season long, it's been refreshing to have a Talon Bolin on hand. Energetic, never gives up. A little bit wild if he needs to be. Yeah, I really... Especially the way the Supercross season went for him, with just one problem after another, I thought, wow, I don't, look at that line. Just, yeah, I think I'll just go here. <laughs> it's just tractor marks. But it, it's actually been able to find traction there. We're in the groove. It's a little bit more polished off, like I was saying, and it's slick. But yeah, I just didn't expect him to do so well outdoors. I know that that was where his uh, expertise was, kind of like Tortelli, and he surprised me in that opener of the year when he passed Carmichael. Well, he really had to get his timing back after being in the GP so long as far as jumps are concerned. Well, I'm pretty sure he's got used to that. I'm sure he's seen more jumps this year than he's seen probably in his last three or four years. Very happy to be able to stay in the United States for two more seasons, at least now that he's re-upped with Pro Circuit. Ricky Carmichael starts our Suzuki stopwatch. Almost a four-second lead on Ron Cotta, so he's starting to pull away just a little bit on number 22 as we go all the way back to third. That gives you an idea how fast Carmichael and Ron Cotta are going. Almost 20 seconds on Casey Johnson and Bull, and they're pushing each other, so just slightly off the pace. And quite a pack of riders there battling for third. Jessamine. Still in that battle. He's got Carl Nunn, the European, applying a little bit of pressure to him. There you see him, 955. What a fine ride that Carl Nunn has put in in his first American race. He's come over, I think, for the GPs. He's a GP rider anyway in the 125s, but uh, he had a ninth place finish in the opening moto. Got a chance for a, a pretty fine overall finish here as we take a look at Casey Johnson. Nice momentum through that corner. Comes down the hill on the outside or the, his left. And just sweeps all the way through there, right back on the power. Corner speed here is important, especially some of these off-cameras and when they head back up the hill. Let me correct myself. Carl Lund got an eighth in that first moto. That was in front of Casey Johnson. And here is our leader, Ricky Carmichael. Look at him go to work in all those super cross sections. Puts the bike exactly where he wants it. Hard on the power before the bike even touches the ground. He's already wide open. That rear tire is just waiting to hit something and start going. It's that section that Ricky Carmichael just went through that makes me think that uh, Mr. Dunn has a future in Supercross, maybe. The Englishman holding in there pretty well in this uh, American motocross. This track is a, a really nice blend of Supercross outdoor off camber fast tricky with an uphill start and you can see the whole thing from the spectator standpoint wow that's 
that's the kind of stuff that can come up and bite you. We saw Chiodi go down in the first moto, or Chiodi rather, and same kind of thing. You just hit something, get a little bit offline, and it can send you down. That time Ricky was just on top of it enough to save it. Remember that race he went cartwheeling last year in first place, got up and still won the race? You can do it all. <laughs> Round 12, drawing near a close. We'll be right back to check out a checkered flag. Photo of the year. Our leader, Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael just checked out. Stefan Roncotta in second place, unable to keep up with him. Another great performance by Ricky Carmichael. Looking to tie Mark Burnett's all-time career 125 mark. Let's get out of Davy Coombs with Duke Finch of the AMA. This 125 motor winds down. You're watching Team USA's entry, Ricky Carmichael, for the 1999 Motocross of Nations win yet another race. And Duke Finch right here with the AMA. Duke, how do you feel about our team going to Brazil? Uh, I think we've got a good, strong team. I mean, Ricky's record stands for itself. Uh, Kevin Windham's won the most motos of anybody this year. And Michael Rocco is just a bulldog. He'll go fight for us. I know that it's been a long time since America won, since 1996, actually. Can you guys bring that plate back? I think so. The, the track down there, uh, from what I understand, has got a few more jumps than what most of the European tracks have got. Uh, even though it's going out doubles, there should be some stuff that we can make our guys go good on. Good luck. Thanks. I mentioned earlier, Ricky Carmichael doesn't plan on uh, hopping on a 250 for that 250 GP at Bud's Creek next week. He wants to be primed and ready for the 125s in Brazil. And from the sound of things, it sounds like that track uh, will really be right up the American's alley. You know, I, I hate to think of it, really, but it's kind of been the talk in the past since we have lost that title is that the, the Americans' chances are usually equated with how many jumps are on the track or if it's going to rain or not. But I think it, this year we've got it covered. If Kevin Windham and, and LaRocco both ride well in certain cir circumstances that don't require supercross technique. So does Carmichael, and, and Kevin and LaRocco both ride excellent in the mud, so our chances look great this year. We're looking at Talon Bolin right now. And right behind him is Casey Johnson. Johnson, after going down, trying to get back up into the fray. Starting to copy Bolin's line right there, coming out of that inside. Cuts off quite a bit of racetrack. Gets a setup for the double. Pingree's still hanging. Jessman's still there. That's a good pack. It, they're really not able to get in and dice with one another, but one mistake, and it'll get close. Carl Nunn also in that mix, at the tail end of it anyway, as we take a look at Ron Cotta in second place. And that was exactly the little mistake like that. Those are the kinds of things that are dropping him off the pace of Carmichael. Brock Sellers taking the long walk back to the pits in a very disappointing ending to the season for Brock. You know what, though? Having a national win under his belt now is uh it's a great feeling i mean he's got to be disappointed on the day he'd like to probably win one more but it's been a pretty good season for him and with carmichael out of it next year he really could be the guy that steps up and wins it all six podiums including his victory at washougal with a one three brock seller is one of the uh, many we look forward to seeing in action battle for the uh, vacated crown and here's another guy you think might be right there battling with Brock. Number 60, David Pingree, should he stay away from injury. I can't, I'll never forget the time we were in the press room in San Diego. Just had said hello to him. Hey, how's it going? Oh, everything's great. He was carrying his helmet, headed out on the track a few minutes later and learned that he'd crashed, broken his leg, twisted everything. It was ACL. Yeah, it was a lot of problems for him to have to come back from. And forget the fact that he's pretty young, a lot of talent. Plenty of potential still there for David Pingree. Came back to win a Supercross this year. Let's get out of David. That's one disappointed rider behind me, Brock Sellards. He grew up right across the Pennsylvania border in Ohio. I knew he really wanted to do well here. Fortunately, before his bike broke, it appears he clinched second in the final 125 championship standings. With Ricky Carmichael moving up to the 250 class, that guy right there has got to be one of the favorites for the year 2000. Brock Sellards having the frustrating moment of watching the rest of the race that was his that was sorry that was his bike that the <laughs> mechanic was just pushing across the track and behind these guys jessamine and nunn this is an interesting little battle jessamine with a lot of uh, potential a young rider carl nunn 
after running the GPs, coming over here and trying the American circuit. Jessamine, as you see there, in sixth position. Europeans seem to be having more and more success coming over here and doing well in Supercross, getting their feet wet, and then coming back in years to follow and testing it the whole time. A little, little fish tail off the berm there. But uh, th this could be a guy we'll be looking a lot more at in the future. The Englishman on the Yamaha. They're both still chasing uh, David Pingree. Pingree, though, holding his own. He wants a, a fine possible podium spot if he can move up. Davey Coombs making his way over the mechanics area. Let's go to Davey. As the 125 moto winds down, I want you to check this out. That's Doug Henry and his wife, Stacy, getting ready for the last moto of Doug's career. The sport of motocross and supercross is going to miss these two more than I could probably explain right here. And uh, a lot of people are going to miss a good friend when Doug decides to go home to Connecticut. Talking with Doug Henry before the race, uh, he said, I'm glad I'm going to retire, but I was talking with it with my wife last night before we went to sleep and he says I'm glad I'm gonna retire but it sucks and then he apologized for saying suck and I think he's the only writer at Delmont Pennsylvania that would do such a thing <laughs> <laughs> that's a real example of his character I mean it's he is such a, a gentleman out there and he's been such a great champion such a, a source of inspiration for everybody with all that he's battled through more 125s when we get back Five here at Del Monte in the final round of the year. Ricky Carmichael looking for his ninth victory of the season. Only has a few more hundred yards before he sees the checkered flag. He always loves to win. Oh. <laughs> Just so he can do that. I think he would do that even if he didn't win. You could hear the crowd there anticipating and coming around for that. Greg Albertine discussing things with Roger DeCaster before the final 250 moto of the year. But Ricky Carmichael, last week, of course, joined Brack Glover and Mark Barnett as the only three-time winners in 125 history. And, of course, uh, should he not get a flat tire, a broken chain right now, he would tie Mark Barnett's 125 record of 25 wins. Casey Johnson battling with Talon Bolin. This is a great thing about motocross. You got Ricky Carmichael way out in front, but uh, there's always some racing going on somewhere, and this has been a great back and forth battle. These guys have been bugging each other the whole race while Carmichael is just able to make it look, it's just unbelievable. You can go back and watch Bolin in this scene. What a lot of people around the country this year have seen, and that is just a truly amazing talent in Carmichael. So Ricky Carmichael, Gets the checkered flag and will take the victory lap. Carmichael Roncata, second. Talon Bolin regains third. Casey Johnson, David Pingree are top five. Let's get out to Davey. Talon, good solid ride to end the season. Yeah, it feels good, you know. Uh, I guess I'll hang out with Barnett for a while, I'd say. Uh, I'll tell you what, with all the help from Kawasaki and uh, Fox, Oakley Pro Circuit, my mom and dad, my mechanic Chad Watts, I tell you I had a uh, THQ, Troy Lee Designs, Bell Helmets, Alpine Star Boots, and uh, thanks to uh, your family and your whole crew for getting a, getting a good track today. I wouldn't have been able to do it, and uh, I'd like to thank everybody for supporting me through my 125 career. It was definitely a good one. Looking ahead to the year 2000, you got one more race on the 125, the motocross designations. When are you going to get on that 250? Uh, probably next week, I imagine. Uh, I'm going to uh, ride the 125 just a little bit before the donations, but uh, I'll be 110% for that race, definitely. Well, good luck, Ricky. It's been a pleasure watching you on the 125, and I know you got it, and you're on the 250. Thanks a lot, David. I like a who's who of modern champions. We've got LaRocco, McGrath, Emmy, Henry, and now Greg Albertine. You got to wonder where the motivation is in this final moto to really push it to the edge from Albertine and Doug Henry. The final moto of the 1999 season. They start jumping the gate. Looks like malfunction. That was Robbie Raynard getting off last as he got caught in the gate. Somebody down on the first turn. We'll have to check it out. That's Larry Ward. 
My goodness, after such a great first photo, check this out. Well, it looks to me like some of the guys over there, Robbie Rayner perhaps, it's hard to spot from this particular angle, but somebody got going early and then everybody else reacted to it. Everyone's on pins and needles at that moment. And Tim Ferry gets his first hole shot of the year. Meanwhile, Ward back there in the middle of the pack, he goes down and just gets run over. It seems like guys can miss you at that point when they're towards the rear of the field, but he's still got punched around a little bit, so a huge difference for Larry. Even with the pressure off, look who's in second place behind Tim Ferry. Greg Albertine, Doug Henry in third. He's been such a, an important part of Supercross and motocross in his career, Doug Henry. Gosh, he's got to be the sentimental favorite right now. He is. I'm sure they'd like to see any of these guys go out and close the day. Tim Ferry, for one, the privateer, to get a moto victory. To see Albertine close out the season in championship fashion with a win. And to see Doug, I mean, there's a lot of people out here you can be rooting for. That's what's been great about this series. It would be Albertine's third win of the year if he can take the overall. And he's been so consistent throughout the season three second place finishes a third place at Bud's Creek to go along with the victories never worse than the eighth place finish at Glen Helen the opening round that's what it takes the year I won the 250 national championship I only won two races two or three I don't even remember but it, it wasn't very many I can tell you that but I was very consistent well as we mentioned earlier John Michelle Bale won the title in 91 in the 250s without a victory John Michelle Bale was just amazing to come over here and win every championship, the 250, the 500, the Supercross, all in the same year, and then just said, all right, I'm going to go road racing. I mean, that's just amazing, the talent that guy had. And what I hear, he still goes pretty fast on a Supercross track. Ferry Albertine, Doug Henry, Kevin Windham in fourth, and John Dowd rounding out the top five. Morocco back at eight. Mike Caton, another pretty decent start there with the top ten. As we take a look at the entire field. Another great start for Albertine. Just having an excellent day. And it's just too bad his teammate Larry Ward going down to the front, running up front the first moto, having the lead. Looking like he probably held on to it if he wanted, said things were just clicking for him. And this moto, he just about gets run over by four or five riders as he goes down the first corner. One Never of the, know. One of the fastest riders on the track is Robbie Raynard after the last place start. He's trying to move his way up through the field. That's kind of, if we could think of a nickname for Robbie, it would be something to do with having to come from behind and pick riders off through the pack at a fast pace. We'll have to work on that for next year. Yeah, he just, he's a little bit like the Rocco he's been over the years and that he just always seems to be coming from behind. And of course, this is his favorite track, as we mentioned before. Albertine would love to go out with a moto victory right now, side by side with Ferry. Ferry the inside, and here goes Albertine cutting to the inside. That's a, that move surprised me at that point, but now Albertine takes the lead. He just planned that out a little bit better. He forced Ferry to go down to that corner so hard he had to drift wide after the berm and sort of make a little S turn out of it where Albie came down. Was able to come from the outside, square the corner off, and get much more speed as they approach these jumps. No problem for the pass. So Albertine takes the lead here in the final moto of the season. We'll be right back with more 250 action from Delmont and Oaks back at Delmont, Pennsylvania Steel City Raceway. We've had an exciting afternoon already as we see Doug Henry and Kevin Windham battling for third place. Henry in his final race of his career. Windham just starting what looks like a great championship career ahead of him. Looked like he had an inside line up there on Doug. Doug knew it well, cut over, closed it off. Whoa. Talk I about acceleration did. in that corner. <laughs> Great move by Kevin Windham. My goodness. And that puts Henry back and forth. Let's go to Davey. Steve, Tim finally got that start you've been hoping for the whole time, and so far he's proven he can hold on to it. Yeah, I know it's been all year, and he waits for the last motor to do it, but yeah, hopefully he can stay strong. You got Wyndham right behind you. You got to know that Wyndham wants to prove a point to Albertine. Tim going right along with him, kind of caught in the crosshairs. It's a good thing for you guys. Yeah, definitely it is. It's going to help push him. Plus, uh, Timmy wants to prove to these guys, too, that he can hang with him, so hopefully he can. Three times, Ferry has finished sixth overall. But he's on his way right now of his best overall performance of the year. 
He is in the middle. One of the first nationals I rode was 1981, and I was lined up right in between Kent Howerton and Bob Hanna at Mount Morris. Talk about nerve. I didn't mean to be lined up there. It was all that was left. And those guys just hated each other. It looks like Kevin's going to just bump him back one spot and get up there and deal with Albertine on his own. Catch it. Kevin Wyndham, a great deal of pride. Understand Kevin's been uh, a house guest of Jeff Stanton's lately. That's always good if you can spend some time with somebody like Stanton who has all that experience just to hang out and talk. I mean, they don't even have to go riding or training. Just, just being around Jeff, little things rub off. Now, be serious. You don't think that he's not having to work out if he goes to Stanton's oh, place? I'm sure he is. <laughs> he's too tired to talk. I'll, then. I'll bet Stanton is putting him through boot camp. <laughs> Mel Harris, American Suzuki, the head guy. Boy, he's got to be feel, feeling great right about now. Greg Albertine out in front has already secured the title in the first moto here today. I think those guys could be smiling even if it was Greg that went down in the first corner this morning. But Mel has got to head to, to Greg's house with a checkbook now. <laughs> got to recite it. They'll do what they can to hold on to Greg. They sure will. And of course, that would be the sentimental favorite for Greg would be to sign up once again for Suzuki. He came over here because Roger DeCosta convinced him to do so. He went through a lot of tough years as that program developed. As for Lusk, testing the inside on Doug Henry. Great line. It doesn't matter where Doug Henry's going to finish here today. The crowd will be just as appreciative as if he'd win the championship. He's just enjoying being up there in the mix, putting in a good ride. He's, you know, he's not going to go out there and ride around slow. He's going to get out there and make a good effort of it. He's doing the same thing I think any of us would do. Go out there and try not to get any scuffle with anybody. And just try to be as aggressive as possible. And if it feels a little bit uncomfortable, maybe just back off a little bit. Morocco behind Henry now with the number three plate. 232, the lap times are coming down. That's five seconds faster than what I remember seeing the first moto. Time to take a break from the action. Albertine, first, Wyndham, second, Ferry, third. But look at number nine. Robbie Rayner has passed 31 riders. Sixth, Mike LaRocco putting heat on Doug Henry. Out in front, Greg Albertine in our second moto. If you tuned in late, Ricky Carmichael tied Barnett's record in the 125s with a victory. And Greg Albertine in the first moto for the 250s secured the crown. And Mike LaRocco made it look pretty easy. It was beautiful. He came out of the corner and really pitched the back end down, set himself up for that next little short shoot, squared him up. It's been a very popular place to pass. You've heard Talon Bolin talk about how it's tough to pass out here. I kind of agree. There's a lot of off cameras and one line situations, but you got to have yourself in position for the places where you can make the pass. And right there, Morocco did it perfect. As Reluskin fifth. And he'll get some heat from LaRocco as LaRocco wants as many points as possible to end this year. There's John Dowd behind Henry. It's hard to believe they can get tires to hook up on that service. Those guys all just roll over that bump and then accelerate to jump that next double. And the ground is just polished. He's still able to hook up right there and just go from 10 miles an hour to 40 in order to jump 35 feet across the top under that play tabletop. Albertine, our leader. It's going to be interesting his next race. He's going to uh, join the GP 250 round there at Bud's Creek, the final 250 GP round of the season with all his old buddies from all around the world. And of course, uh, it's been five years since he participated in that particular series. Probably like to show those guys, okay, now, now look how fast I am. Let's go to Davey. Joe, it, it looks like Greg got over, like winning the whole championship thing a few minutes ago. He wants to put an exclamation point on now. Yeah, he won the first moto. He wants to win the second one just to prove it. That was a mood between motos. Were you guys stoked? Yeah, relaxed, a uh, little, little less tension now. So let's go out and race. Let me ask you a question. What are you guys doing next year? I don't know. Just hopefully come back out and do the same thing. <laughs> At least you got number one plate to wear. That's right. <laughs> Thanks. Albie's mechanic Joe Maurer and of course uh, a great deal of credit uh, for Albertine's uh, performance throughout the years has to go to Ian Harrison his longtime mechanic who Roger DeCoster has taken in the uh, in shop for research and development who's doing a great job. All those guys are going to be so happy as soon as somebody wins on the bike the whole team the morale goes up. 
couple of notches. And they know that they have the bike. They've got a number one plate over there. They've got Pastrana joining the team. He looks like he's going to be a hot prospect. And uh, yeah, things are really starting to look up. I mean, in 1981, when Ken Howerton won the championship, Suzuki was the bike, that full floater, super lightweight bike. I remember one time they came out at Mount Morris, as a matter of fact, with tarps covering the bikes. They didn't want anyone to see that full floater that they came out with. <laughs> they were definitely the dominant force, and it looks like they're starting to get that back. Jimmy Button, number 10, is looking to secure his fourth podium in the last four races. He's starting to put the heat on Tim Ferry for third place and makes the pass and gives him a, a face full of dirt. Kind of used the lap rider a little bit to his advantage. Could have been there. Ferry wasn't really sure how to cover that. Kind of catch 22. If you go wide, you, you give him all. Oh, Ferry comes right back. What a move. Oh, this is great. Yeah, Ferry came in a little bit wide. He was going to try to square it. He was trying to get a little bit uh, free of that lap rider. And Button just snuck right in there and took it. But then Button bobbles a little bit right there, gets over the main line at the berm. Ferry just makes a beeline right for the good berm, cuts him right back off. So a great move by Tim Ferry puts him back into third place. Albertine is still our leader. We will return in a moment. He's running out in the 1999 motocross season. Greg Albertine crowned our 250 champion. And this is the lone remaining battle right now as Robbie Raynard has done an incredible job getting out of the gate last. He got hung up in the gate. And now he's in a battle for eighth place with John Dowd, number six. That's an <laughs> impressive ride. If anybody, any of these spectators out here happen to just notice that, they have got to be pulling for him to move up as far as he can. Here comes Button again. Makes that inside loop work on Ferry. So Button moves into third. That would put him on the podium. Ferry really charging down that hill hard. Jumps a little bit farther down there, lands in a break and bump, and he's pushing it as hard as he can. He wants that podium for the second moto. He's gonna have to fight Button for it, and that's not gonna be easy, because Button is just on a roll lately. Look at here, Raynard up the hill on John Dowd, cuts him off. Robbie Raynard moves into eighth place. Look how beautiful. Raynard went around that corner just perfect. Feet on the pegs, laid over, over the doubles. Timing was just right. Can he get the seventh now with Doug Henry in front of him? Well, this is an incredible ride by Robbie. It's always important to go out and give it 100%, but you just, I've had some of these rides, and you just hate to sort of waste one on a seventh place finish if that's what he can get up to and hang on to. It's, you'd sort of like to have those be first or second, or at least a battle for the lead when you come from that far behind. It is the last race of the year. It won't go unnoticed. Robbie will be participating in the 250 GP next week at Bud's Creek. And here's Greg Albertine. Oh, he's going to be feeling great inside. This, there's going to be a big party tonight. He's got the title, probably the overall, the final round, a couple of moto wins, just to put an exclamation point on everything. He's been confident the whole time. I, I wasn't absolutely sure looking at the talent lined up for this 250 class this year, but he has proven. Came right out before the first race of the year, said, I'm going to win it all. A lot of people said that was lip service, especially after his frustrations of the four previous seasons. But he believed in himself. He had faith in himself, faith in the machine and the program, and that's obvious. There's Kevin trying to close the gap a little bit, but it wouldn't matter in the overall, and it certainly wouldn't matter for the title. This is just one of those races where you just going, just come on, just give me the white flag. It already hurts bad enough. Well, Kevin is a classy guy, and he's learned so much this year, David. I think Kevin has really realized more so in this series than ever before that every point counts, and that you can't give up no matter how bad it seems. That first race it could have been a, a whole different story if he had stayed out there and just tried to salvage something. You never know. I, I look back to McGrath doing that. Same thing in Washougal a few years ago. Greg Albertine comes across the finish line with the checkers flying. So this is the first time Suzuki has won here at Del Monte in a 250. And Greg Albertine gets the sweep. Almost gets a kiss from his wife. Here's Doug Henry. What an emotional moment this has got to be with the Henry family. So many friends and family drove to 
Belmont to see this last race. I'm glad I got to be around to see Doug's career. I watched the whole thing, and in some ways, he's going to be glad to not have to come back to all this, but he will miss it. The redness in Doug's eyes right now didn't come from the roost in this race. We'll have to see what he has to say when we return one early in the season. Ezra Lusk made things exciting, taking over the points lead at Southwick, and Mike LaRocco, number three, gained his first national win since 1996. Jimmy Button became the season's second first-time winner, and Kevin Windham, he was the winningest rider in 1999 with four victories. But in the end, it was a three-time world champion proudly showing off his number one plate. Greg Albertine winning Moto2 with Windham in second, Button in third. Robbie Raynard after getting off the gate in last place all the way to seventh. Let's go to Davey. During all the years you've been here, a lot of times big crashes, you had problems here and there. Did you ever lose faith or did you ever lose hope that you could pull this off, accomplish this championship? Well, a few times I had some doubts, but uh, you know what? That, I, I mean, a real champion is a guy who fights back, and uh, I hope I've proved to everyone that I am a worthy champion. See you next year at the number one plate. Thanks. I can't wait. For Albertini, his seventh moto win of the year, his second sweep of the year. Kevin Windham in second, Jimmy Button getting that podium. But a big story, of course, is Doug Henry. Back to Davey. I got to tell you, it's been a pleasure working with you all these years, from the Honda days, the privateer days, way back when you were a nobody from New England sleeping in your van in Florida. Always yeah. a class act, Doug. Uh, you know, Stace and I were sitting there on the line watching the 125 class, and it's like I remember watching the three-digit guy saying, boy, you know, eight years ago I was doing the same thing, you know, just trying as hard as I could. And, uh, you know, to all those guys out there, you know, that are working hard, you know, just if you want something bad enough, you know, you can get it. <laughs> exactly the philosophy of the young man who won the number one plate this year, Greg Albertine, who took it by 29 points over Kevin Windham in the final count. It's all academic now. Ricky Carmichael taking his third consecutive 125 crown. Art Ekman, David Bailey, David Coombs, thank you for joining us throughout the season. Let's take a look back at some of the exciting moments. I've seen the grand old Opry, and I met Johnny Cash. If that, if that ain't country, country, I'll kiss your ass. <laughs> qualifying heat of the year is underway. We've got a one-two battle on the last lap. Casey Johnson with a little rub on his teammate. The checkers are out for Ezra Lusk. It is a Honda sweep. His first victory ever, Nathan Ramsey. Well, I got to think about what you said. Whoever wins this round seems to go on and win the title. The advantage has got to be in Jeremy's favor now. And the second consecutive year for victory for Larry Ward. Miracles on the racetrack. Fonseca with the checkers. His fourth career Supercross victory. Kelly Smith doesn't want to blow it either. This is his finest heading, and they collide. Kelly Smith goes down. The crowd comes alive. Here comes Pichon boxing out McGrath. Ward's trying to hold him off. Can he do it to the checkered flag? The two corners to go. No, he can't. McGrath has got him. Almost a photo finish, but McGrath had him by a wheel. Well, you can hear the fans. Here's Tortelli to the inside. Tortelli! I haven't seen anything like this since Bob Hanna did it. Oh, my goodness. Carmichael, as we counted, is in 35th. Oh, midway goes flying through the air. Is a 34 rider handicap enough for Ricky Carmichael? So here goes Albertine. Don't look back, the sign says. Oh, Carmichael ran into Brock Sellers hard. The FMF Honda going for the checkered fly. Brock Sellers wins his first bundle of the season. Jason McCarmick, you think he's happy? Whoa, with the planet Honda crew, that's their very first photo win.
This has been a production of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Part of Go Network. Go.